The higher your expectations, the worse your disappointment. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 disappointing games of all time. For more gaming videos, check out our new spin-off channel, Mojo Plays, for in-depth reviews, thoughtful video essays, detailed character origins, and insightful commentary. Mojo Plays. Game smarter. For this list, we're not looking at any particular decade, genre, or era, but the most disappointing games across all of gaming history. What makes them disappointing isn't always that they're bad games, though sometimes they really are, but rather that they were overhyped compared with their final product, repeatedly delayed or just not as good as their predecessors. A dream. I had been reliving the tragic moments of my recent past. Number 10, Spore. People had big hopes when Maxis promised to condense all of evolutionary theory into one huge game. But unfortunately, even a game with so much variety couldn't help but get kinda samey and dull after barely an hour of initial gameplay. Spore sees players create their own creatures, tribes, cities, and eventually travel into space. But all of these interesting ideas ended up being what feels like a series of mini-games, with only the final space stage feeling unique and exciting. Unfortunately, lots of players gave up with its repetitive gameplay long before they even reached that point. After eight years in development hell, it was just too little, too late. <laughs> Number 9, Sonic the Hedgehog, aka Sonic 06. When it comes to Sonic, he's probably actually had more bad games than he's had good ones, but none are quite as bad as Sonic 06. For one, the time travel story is convoluted and nonsensical, ending with a retcon of everything you'd accomplished in the game. And that's if you actually manage to finish it, because it's, you know, it's really bad. The main reason for its problems is that the developers didn't actually, you know, finish it. Instead, rushing to release an untested beta riddled with glitches and oversensitive controls. But the worst thing about this game was its broken camera, which would randomly just rotate and cause you to not see where you're going. Number 8, Star Wars Battlefront, EA series. You'd be forgiven for thinking that after the flop MMO that was Star Wars Galaxies in 2003, game developers would have learned to not cross Star Wars fans. But unfortunately, EA failed to heed this warning not once, but twice. Their first Battlefront game launched with barely any content and a hefty $50 season pass. Not to mention that there was no single player campaign which even John Boyega ended up complaining about. Then in 2017, for what was supposed to be an apology for these issues, EA implemented such a predatory progression system, relying on loot boxes, that it sparked calls from government officials to regulate microtransactions in gaming. Way to go, guys. Today, the rebellion dies. Number seven, Deus Ex Invisible War. What kind of assignment do you expect with that attitude? A risky one, with a big salary. The original Deus Ex released in the year 2000, and is regarded as one of the greatest and most important video games of all time, which is why its sequel three years later was such a disappointment. While on its own, Invisible War isn't necessarily a terrible game, it's a letdown by comparison to the other entries in this groundbreaking series, as well as the hardware of the original Xbox. With small map sizes and bland environments, combined with a story that's just trying too hard to bring the series to new and innovative heights, along with heavy casualization of a lot of the systems, this entry fell way short of what it should have been. Helipad, let's go. Move. Number 6, Final Fantasy 13. Right, new recruits, on me! Any series that runs as long as Final Fantasy will have a lot of highs and lows, but the 13th installment is probably as low as it's ever gone. Long running fans pretty much agree that 13 fell short on expectations. Well, for the start, most of its core characters were dull and hard to care about, the combat system was overhauled and modified to make it, well, worse, and finally, the biggest criticisms were aimed at its linear structure. Taking a tried-and-true, more open-world RPG formula and turning it into a linear experience with way less exploration, way less towns, and way less side missions was just a bad move. Number 5, No Man's Sky. They promised densely populated alien planets, a quest to reach the center of the universe, intergalactic dogfights, and infinitely generating galaxies. But upon its release, No Man's Sky didn't reach any of those expectations. 
While it may include some 18 quintillion planets, the possibility of finding anything interesting on them was kinda slim to nil, and it's widely considered to have one of the most misleading and disastrous marketing campaigns in gaming. The small team at Hello Games just didn't have the manpower to make the game everything it promised to be, much to the disappointment of gamers everywhere. Number 4. Aliens Colonial Marines Are they moving? No. Wait. I got an unidentified signal. At E3 2012, an impressive demo was shown for Colonial Marines. One so flashy, it disguised all of the development issues that had been plaguing it for years. Developed by Gearbox Software, rumors began that the developer had been focusing its efforts instead on its popular Borderlands series, among others. What was eventually released was a game with a bad story, bad graphics, and bad gameplay which didn't live up to the name of this giant sci-fi franchise. Number 3. Daikatana He stole the sword, and then used its magical powers to go back in time. Announced in 1997, it promised to revolutionize the first-person shooter genre, a game which crosses into four different time periods with more weapons and enemies than anyone had ever seen before. It's not surprising that gamers had high hopes for Daikatana. Unfortunately, the game fell victim to the egos of its top developers, who ran an infamous ad which only read, John Romero's about to make you his bitch. Trying to force it out quickly actually led to numerous delays, and by release it had actually fallen behind its competitors technologically, and had glitchy gameplay, annoying AI, and a very bad story. Pardon the interruption, Miyamoto-san. There is a visitor waiting outside, refuses to identify himself. Number 2. Everything by Rare after Microsoft's buyout a disgraced bounty star. For more than 20 years, Rare was one of the leading developers in gaming, responsible for such hits as Donkey Kong Country, GoldenEye 007, Perfect Dark, and Banjo-Kazooie, just to name a few. But in 2002, Rare was purchased by Microsoft for $375 million, and it all went downhill from there. Their last game with Nintendo, Star Fox Adventures, had noticeably cut corners. Perfect Dark Zero released in an unfinished state, and Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts was a radical departure from its beloved predecessors. Now with the recent release of Sea of Thieves, a game that spent years in development, only to release with next to no actual content, it seems that Rare's fate has all but been sealed. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Number 1. Duke Nukem Forever Fifteen years! Fifteen years of combined hype and development for the highly anticipated sequel to one of the greatest first-person shooters of the 1990s. Well, it's no wonder that Duke's legacy came crashing down with such a thud. Having switched through multiple engines, multiple developers, and multiple publishers throughout its disastrous development period, what finally emerged from this roller coaster was a game that was stuck with its outdated gameplay mechanics. And even more outdated jokes. So, unless Half Life 3 ends up suffering a similar fate, Duke Nukem will forever go down as the most disappointing video game of all time. What about the game, Duke? Was it any good? <laughs> yeah, but after 12 f***ing years, it should be. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.